Something revolving Whatever may come The world keeps revolving They say the next big thing is here That the revolution's near But to me it seems quite clear That it's all just a little bit of history repeating We're digging under the airwaves of mainstream radio in the case of misstep music. You can expect to hear songs that don't get played from the artists you know and love. Funk to punk. Rock to reggae. Hip-hop to doo-wop. Look beneath the surface of the mainstream. The music may surprise you and expand your musical cuisine. Join us, Ryan and Emma, for a time warp into... History Repeating. Welcome to the new season of History Repeating. We're so excited. We have such a great lineup. Um, the new format of our show, we have the interviews with the artists that we're playing, and you're going to get to hear stories and memories from these artists that you wouldn't probably have ever heard before. We're going in-depth on their career, on their songs, and some underrated stuff. So we're really excited for that. And to kick things off, we're really excited for our first guest. They are Europop pioneers basically defined the genre they were like huge in the 70s massively popular so if you're thinking of ABBA you're wrong they were before ABBA and they influenced ABBA so if you don't know who we're talking about yet I think this next song is going to give you a clue as to who that is In case you didn't know, that was middle of the road. And we're so excited. We have 
two members of Middle of the Road, lead singer Sally Carr and drummer Ken Andrew. I got to sit down and interview with them, and I, I mean, I got to hear so many incredible stories. And um, they basically kind of made Europop. They gave it that Latin sound. They were originally, um, they told me, part of a band called Los Caracas, which was a um, Latin American influence band. And they um, were part of that for about three years before they became Middle of the Road. And so they kind of took that Latin sound with them into Europop, and then you can see that carried on through like all of the years of for everyone in Europop. Everyone was using that Latin sound. And that's kind of where it came from. So it's quite and, and Chirpy Chirpy Cheep Cheep. Yeah, you, you can really hear it in uh, a lot of the songs in Chirpy Chirpy Cheep Cheep, the most famous. You can really hear it in that one. And you know, not everyone was actually a fan of that song, including Ken Andrew. So uh, why don't we take a listen to hear his opinion on Chirpy Chirpy Cheep Cheep. And when you heard um, Chirpy Chirpy Cheep Cheep, what did you think about that song? I loved it, and I still do, Ryan. I still love it. But go on, Ken, you tell him what you thought of it. <laughs> well, let's put it this way. The first moment I heard it, I thought, oh dear. <laughs> I don't seem to have a very good reputation anywhere if we sing this song. It was just so stupid. And so the only way that um, the, the three of us, the three boys, um, decided that, um, yeah, that was the case, but we would record it if it provided us with enough alcohol to sing. And that they did. And then we sang, and the rest is history. We were quite wrong, Sally was right, because it is a catchy tune, it's a catchy song, and it's a bit of fun. And I think at the time we were wanting to be more serious uh, and trying to develop as a serious musical group. But in fact, it, it put us on the right on the right road in terms of um, popularity and commercialism, really. It's a, just a bit of fun. That's right. And everywhere we perform it, Ryan, everywhere, all over Europe, whatever, everyone joins in. I get the audience to join us and we sing the chorus. I just let them sing on their own and I stand and listen to them. And they love it. You can see the, the happiness in their face. They really do love it.
You know, that was that's a really catchy song. That was mm-hmm. the first middle of the road song that I ever heard. It's and really you yeah, too. Me yeah. too. It's really an earworm. It has so much like re- repeating feel to it or yeah, because yeah. it, it's essentially mm-hmm. the same thing mm-hmm. over and over again. And Ken even said it's an ear mm-hmm. earworm itself. But it's so playful and exciting, and you just can't help but like listen to it over and over again. I know you did. Yeah, for sure. I, mm-hmm. Sad. It it has um, some interesting lyrics, which um, are sad lyrics that um, Ken told. Uh, he told us Sally didn't know either. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was talking to them, Sally didn't know that the lyrics were that sad. You wouldn't think that from hearing it. No, no, and she said um, her performance would have been different if she had have known that the song was so sad. Okay. But uh, nonetheless, it's a great song. I oh, mean, really? it's a really catchy song, mm-hmm. and it's a lot of fun to listen to over and over again. Mm-hmm. And the vocals on it, Sally's got like... An amazing harmony, too, because like Sally just kind of leads it all. But and that's oh. the, that was the first yeah. single, so it's oh. kind of like mm-hmm. set the tone of what Europop was kind of mm-hmm. like at the time. Might even say they have really kind of worldly feel, especially like in Sacramento. There's a lot of I think a Western feel to their music, almost. Yeah, and it's funny because the they've actually never been to Sacramento, but Sacramento TV used Sacramento uh, as a theme song to Good Morning Sacramento. Um, and as Ken says, it's funny that Sacramento loves Sacramento. They've never been to Sacramento, but I mean, it seems to be the theme song for Sacramento. <laughs> And it, Ken likes it, too, because um, it gave him a bit of freedom on the drums. And it was, um, as he said to me, it was actually his favorite of all the songs that they did. I guess we'll get to hear what he says about it in this interview. Ryan, I call that one sack, the drummer. <laughs> 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 well, I'm sure <laughs> <laughs> always, well, I always made a bit of a joke out of that song when we recorded it live. But Sacramento, a green song. I love that as well. But I must, I must say that I, I like Sacramento. Well, that's mainly because it gives me a chance to play the drums properly. To get onto it. I love the rhythm in it. I like, I like being able to make the breaks in it. It's not actually the recording of Sacramento, uh, with that with the uh, RCA, is very strict. The, you know, it's, it's quite straight. There's not too many, uh, what should we say, holes in it with the drums. As a drummer, I'm always looking at the drums a lot of the time to get to hear how it can complement the, complement the uh, song. And I think that um, Sacramento gave me the opportunity to do things live that weren't necessarily on the recording. So that's probably why I like Sacramento. <laughs>
that Sacramento, you can really hear it in that, that that's really got a lot of more drumming parts than Chirpy Chirp Cheap Cheap. And it's a really fun song. It's kind of a, I would say it's one of my favorites. It's one of those ones that when people hear it, they just, it's kind of instantly like it. It's one of those just overall great songs. It's great to see how Ken has a really big lead over the whole music. It just, he kind of carries the whole tune. Yeah, and when uh, he, he does it live, he can just kind of make up some mm-hmm. fills in it, and he really likes that. I think their music has like a, such a, like a big range of different sounds, especially like this is just one with more like a drumming focus, but if you get in other songs, it's much different with like a lot of different mm-hmm. instruments, big varieties. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't actually um, a hit, really. It wasn't a big hit in the UK, but it was actually a bigger hit in most European countries than Chirpy Chirpy Cheep Cheep. It was actually it was huge, uh, especially in Germany. So and I, again, you know, it really just showed how good middle of the road was that they could carry on mm-hmm. their success and top Chirpy in most countries. Really, they could just continue to influence full Europop for generations. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for years and years. And speaking of uh, Ken having a lead on a song, um, "Summer Days," which is actually. Um, one of their more underrated came later on, uh, I think maybe 74. Um, Ken actually wrote that song, and he was surprised that the group actually liked it. But um, it's a funny story um, about Ken writing that song, and uh, it really comes from just a kind of a, a place of just its a purity. It the, the song, the way he wrote it, it's just um, for the most simple reason. Uh, and so here's Ken to tell you about Summer Days. Oh, I love that. Yes, that's, um, that's, I love that one. There's, there's one which, um, I, in Scotland we're quite used to rainy, rainy days in the summertime. Um, although it's changed a little bit now, it used to be a little bit warmer, but, uh, I love that song because I was feeling, uh, sort of depressed by the fact, I think at the time things weren't going too well, uh, and I just wanted to, to write something that was hopeful again for the future. And I think that the, I, I remember writing it in, uh, I was in the studio in my house at the time, and I was going through all sorts of difficulties at that time to family relationships, so I was remembering the days when it was good to just go out and be in the sunshine and enjoy it. And I didn't really expect the band to say, yeah, we could record that. And I made the, the uh, a demo of it, took us in, and I was quite surprised that everybody thought that it would be a good song to do. So it ended up. It was a difficult one to get your tongue round. Oh, yes. Well, it ain't kind of difficult <laughs> things to get your tongue round, you know. There's bad for summer days, so the sun was shining. And that was Summer Days. And Sally was right uh, when she said it's a really tricky chorus to sing. It's really fast, that kind of a tongue twister to get that mm-hmm. out. It has it has like a oddly like somber kind of lyrics, but when you really listen, it has this really exciting, just mm-hmm. joyful feel to it. Like like I think a lot of common that's really common in Europop a lot. Yeah, mm. yeah, because I mean, well, Chirpy, as we said, is a sad song, and mm-hmm. other songs, um, Sole Sole, sad, and um, Tweedledee, Tweedledum, not necessarily sad. It depends on how you look at it, but um, that carried on in a lot of Europop because ABBA is mm-hmm. known for. Yeah very somber, melancholy lyrics in very upbeat and happy songs. I wonder what it took to like write that song and like practice that fast lyrics. It, it, was, it would be a difficult mm-hmm. song to write and to sing. It really shows how skilled they are in singing and just instrumental and everything. And it, sh- it should have been a bigger hit than mm-hmm. it was, but it was kind of on... Um, they had some issues with their record label, um, but... You know, they they, uh, they eventually figured that out. And they put out some, uh, probably the best albums towards the end of their career. Mm-hmm. And speaking of uh, record labels, um, Ken actually said um, they signed with a new record label. Um, and so there's going to be some new releases coming out this year. So um, here's Ken to tell you more about that. Well, we're, we're hoping, I think I mentioned to you, we're, we're, we actually have a, a new deal going with a, a company in Arizona who wish to distribute certainly the re recordings. They can't do the RCA ones because that's RCA had those. And I think RCA had just released a final album yet again 
So do you have, um, do you know when that's going to be released? That would be really interesting. To I, I mean, I know that I would love to read about that. Well, uh, we do the best we can. I've, I've still got to work on quite a bit of it at the moment, but I find that going through all the albums, I've been able to see, now standing back from them, what the band was trying to do and how they succeeded to do it. Because there was an element of success as we went on. Uh, the band became much more able to, to write their own material, to produce the recordings, and I think at the end of the day, uh, some of the tracks are still quite suitable today for uh, release. They've got harmonies, they've got rhythm, and they actually sound like a group.
And um, actually, the we didn't uh, mention it before, but the record label is called Renaissance Records. Um, it's mm -hmm. from Scottsdale, Arizona, is mm -hmm. where it's based. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sama Demora from the Music Music album, mm -hmm. I think Ken said, is going to be probably the first release coming up in the next couple months. So that that's something to look forward mm -hmm. to because that album and that song it's not available anywhere on any kind yeah. of a platform. You know? yeah, it's great to see how they're, they're going to piece together all their music for the generations now. Yeah, you get it more accessible. It's mm -hmm. not, other than the first early stuff, it's not as accessible. And you heard Samba de Mora, I mean, it's, it's a really good mm -hmm. song. It has that really Latin feel again, bringing back like the world music and yeah. just the influence on all of your pop. Yeah, and it's a really uh, different song. Mm -hmm. um, and I love how it starts off kind of like um, quiet with Sally's mm -hmm. vocals and then it really yeah, builds into the, to the chorus. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't expect that a Scottish mm -hmm. band would be making that. But that's what Europop really was, and that carried on. And probably, I wouldn't say it's my favorite song from Music Music. That would be um, Don't Leave Me Now, which I didn't actually know that song. That's an amazing song, it's too. It's a sad yeah. song, mm -hmm. but it's a really good song, and Sally's vocals are mm -hmm. really good on that one. I didn't actually know it until um, Ken and Sally recommended it to me. Is that one of the songs they're going to be putting on their new album? Well, on the re-release of Music Our Music, yes. Because yeah. uh, it was on Music Music, and that's mm -hmm. a great album and if you don't know music music i recommend that mm -hmm. everyone should listen to that album it is gives you if you only know middle of the road from chirpy chirpy cheep cheep you should listen to music music you will totally have a different view on the band this song the next song that we're going to play um the last song is actually um ken said it was the best of the singles sally said it was her favorite and it personally, it's my favorite, too. Same for me, too. Yeah, it's Sole Sole. So why don't you hear what uh, they had to say about that song? And then we'll take a listen to how great this song really is. But what I remember about it was I had a flat in Rome. Sorry, I tell a lie. I had a flat in Madrid. And the man who wrote Sole Sole, Fernando Arbex, had a flat up above me. And he came downstairs one day. We had already recorded a couple of things with him. And he came downstairs one day, knocked my door and said, Sally, what do you think of this? And he played slowly, slowly over to me. But some of the lyrics were a little bit out and they didn't match. They didn't work, let's put it that way. So I changed some of the lyrics and then went ahead and we recorded it after that. Yeah, well, I have to say, when I was recording it, and when I sing, Ryan, I do get right inside the song and feel, I like to feel what I'm singing and the opening of that. And to be truthful, I did feel very alone when I sang the opening of that, just a little bit lonely. Um, I really did feel it. And people have said to me, they'd come across in the vocal, I don't know. To be truthful, it's the one song that I do remember my whole heart was in Soli Soli. I remember that very, very much. And then what made it even better for me was it was my son's favorite song as well. Just a little bit lonely Just a little bit sad I was feeling so empty Until you came back Until you came back 
this song has really one of the greatest intros of really any of their music. Really, or what they have really great introductions to all of their songs. But this is a really strong one, and it's very similar. Uh, well, with the opening to Samba de Moore, but um, it. But then after that, it changes so much, and it's I love um, the song. It really it changes. It mm. never kind of stays the same. Kind of the um, rhythm, it, the tempo of the song is going all around. It changes a lot. It really is that like really emotional beginning, and then just kind of like fills with all of them together. It's just really great harmonies. And everything. And, and as you heard um, Sally say, she puts yeah. everything mm-hmm. into that. She, I mean, she wrote the lyrics to it, mm-hmm. and she put her kind of like everything she had mm-hmm. into that song, and it really shows. Oh, it really does. It really does, mm-hmm. and it's probably. I would say if Middle of the Road should be remembered for one song, it should be that song. It is easily Definitely. my favorite. Mm-hmm. I think it's just an incredible song, incredible vocals. Just really made to bring joy to people who listen to it. Just Even though it's got like sad, again, mm-hmm. sad lyrics because it's about being lonely. But then I guess it's kind of hopeful mm-hmm. in the sense, you know? Yeah. But uh, it's it's a really incredible song. And middle of the road i guess should be remembered for more than than what they get credit for they um they don't get enough credit for what they've actually done um people usually just brush them off but they they really did influence an entire genre and um benny and bjorn from abba actually said they based their sound off of middle of the road wow so i mean middle of the road um deserves more credit than they get and it was actually really nice to end the interview i um ask them how they like to be remembered and so um this is sally saying how she would like middle of the road to be remembered and i think it's just the most perfect way to describe the band i hope to remember that we sang nice memorable happy songs fun songs i really think that sally lights up a room when she sings it just she it's amazing how humble they are just thinking about how much they're really the pioneers of europop and Especially maybe you can think about the Latin sound or like worldly instruments. Yeah, they, they really did um, do a lot. They really influenced a lot and they were incredible musicians. And Sally's voice is like no one else. And I'm so glad. I mean, I'm such a big fan of Middle of the Road that I got to talk to them. So um, it's incredible. And um, I, I think they're probably one of the few bands, I guess, that... Um, were continuously successful in Europop because mm-hmm. it was kind of like um, a singles business, mm. but um, Middle of the Road and Boney M and ABBA, they had continued success. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Their songs really evolved. Like, you can hear so much difference in each of them. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, they didn't have the label backing that uh, they should have had. Well, it's but incredible they're getting a chance to make a new like compilation of all their music and new songs that people really haven't heard a lot about. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really excited for that. Me too. I mean, it's, it's coming out pretty soon. And if you want to mm-hmm. find out more about that and um, Middle of the Road, you can check out the entire interview, which we're going to be mm-hmm. posting um, next couple days. And um, we're really excited to start this new season of the show because we have so many other guests, um, including um, Shirley Jones of the Jones Girls, um, Valerie Holiday of the Three Degrees. Um, we got Joe Esposito. Mm-hmm. So, w- I mean, we're just really excited mm-hmm. about uh, everything coming up. And so, um, stay tuned for more history repeating. Oh, just a little bit of history repeating. <laughs> say it's different 